the other question that came up is, oh, wait, so this is a Star Wars VR app. Mm. So it's separate. Is this what Zen's going to be doing for all the VR apps? Like, is there going to be a Williams VR app? Is there going to be a just Zen VR app? Um, yeah. Is everything going to be separated? And if so, oh, that blows. I want everything under the same same roof. Yeah. But I had it's a thought about that. Because... I also had thoughts about that. Well, because I realized, because <laughs> Jared was had you know been telling me about his Quest 2 and the fact that it came in two different versions with different size yeah. memory. And I went... Yeah, you got a 64 and a 256 right. gigabyte version. Well, it's a big disparity. That means you're storing the game on your headset. Yeah. So it actually makes sense to have smaller chunked apps because really we does. all know these pinball apps can grow rather large. <laughs> well, look at the amount of, like, if you, I think the the installation size for FX2 VR is something to the order of 2 gig for, mm. for that game and not much more for um, the extra add-on pack. So if you, let, let's say 2.4 gig, and on that package, it's something to the order of like, uh, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, it's a, about 15 tables, I think. Mm, maybe, give or take. Just run with me on this. So okay. if that's 2.4 gig, um, and you look at the total collection of tables on FX3 being over 100 now, right? Um, that's nearly 25 gig just on, like if you just had it in one app alone. So that's now for me with also the the ROM and all the other games on, I pretty much nearly maxed out my 64 gig of storage. Like I've used about half of it. Which means anytime you want to play a different game other than pinball, you're going to have to uninstall pinball if it was came in a giant chunk. Right, rather yeah. than going, well, I'll just take off. You're going to have to make some hard right. decisions yeah. if, if you do it. And if you don't like, for example a set of like if you for you hate star wars for example if you don't like it well then if you had to like have all that infrastructure in place in the one app to support all that then it wouldn't be any good like you you'd, you'd run out you run into problems real fast and the other thing too is that you know what zen does and we've seen this on mobile before they use their separate app things to try out new things so they, they use their brands to try new new things with the products so they can actually iterate fast on things and like keep things separate. And there is advantages, of course, for the license holders having it like that. I was going to say, uh, the, license, the licensors love it because it just yeah, becomes it's pure there. spotlight. Well, yeah, it's now. their product. Yeah. It's got an, a like, standalone entry in the app store. It comes up in search results for that brand. It's like advertising for them. Yeah. So while it may be a little inconvenient to to go between apps, let me tell you what that would look like because I've switched between you know Pinball FX and another app that I've got on there. It's literally, oh, I'm done with this app now. Oculus menu, quit, back to your, your lobby, select the other game, you're in. So 30 seconds. Okay. thereabouts you actually go from one app to another app it's not a big deal now if they're going to be using the let's say that let's this is speculation here let's say that they're going to be using the pinball fx um, base product so the baseline let's call it ecosystem framework for fx and they're going to roll all these brands on top of that framework then what you'll have is consistent leaderboards across all the apps. You'll have consistent challenge mode, challenge mode integration stuff across all those apps. But the thing that'll be different is the product you're offering and the experience. Should, again, speculation, should they go down the path of making more of these VR experiences for Oculus and having these apps separate like they have? Yeah. So, you know, what does I'm that actually do? kind of jazzed about that. What does that do, though, correct. for, like, okay, so currently we have Pinball FX 2 VR. Yes. Is that only on the Steam Store, or is that available on the Quest 2? I can, yeah, I can, 
install that on all Oculus devices. So if I have a, a Rift, a, a Quest, a Quest 2, um, anything that's by Oculus, it's, they've activated cross-buy on that. So once you buy it once, you can play it on any hardware you own. Any okay. Oculus hardware. I was just True wondering. I was just wondering if they're going to do a full reset. Um, so again, would they come out with Universal uh, Studios VR um, and have that be a separate pack? So it would have the the, the monsters tables, uh, the Universal monsters, Jurassic Park, and then mm. the uh, uh, Back to the Future ET and ET, uh, Jaws table. Because those tables, not the Jurassic Park, but the uh, ET Jaws and Back to the Future, are available in FX Two FX Two VR. Yes. So uh, that's why I'm kind of wondering. I wonder how they would go about doing that. Would they? Would they? I, ca I can't imagine that they would continue using the FX Two VR to put in other. No, that's a dead. Platform, it's, yeah. it's a dead platform. Yeah. Um. It, well, it has to be a dead platform now. Like it's, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, I played it just the other day. Right. It's it still, still functions. It's good. not, yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Like it's not abandonware, like Farsight stuff. But it is. But I imagine they could probably do better with what with the new platform. With the new platform. Oh, I'd imagine so. Like based on what we see in that, in that experience, like having a look at the, the FX2 lobby experience and having a look at what you get in the Star Wars VR app. It's a like it's way more interactive. It looks like you can actually like what they, they have this term in VR called locomotion, which means basically you can move around and how you move around in VR. And that looks like you can't just be in a fixed position. It looks like you need to like walk around hmm. inside that space to get to things. Cause like, you know, there's a, a over the far end, there's like a trophy cabinet. How are you supposed to navigate to that? Like it, it seems right. like you're walking around, which is kind of cool because that's not how it works in FX too. No, like, FX two, you're you're a static spot. Yeah, or yeah, you're, you're a fixed spot in your lounge, and then you you can actually look around your environment, and that actually selects a pinball machine that yeah. you're looking at. Now I, I don't know, like I'd like to see my lounge with a few more pinball machines in it than just one. Yeah, you know? <laughs> as as we've seen with you know people displaying their arcade one up, you know mini arcade. They got like a whole walls of these things. It looks like, cool when you got a bunch. It kind of looks sad when you only have one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's very much a feature right in that mm -hmm. area, and that's pretty cool. But the thing I really like about um, the FX two VR is how the environments change. All the environment, right? The entire environment. You switches like when you're in when you're in paranormal it goes into like this like really dark jungle environment it looks so cool you're like you're looking out the windows and you're seeing this complete environment change around you i wonder how they're going to do that in this app I wonder if there's going to be some like environmental effects yeah. around the the table apart from the characters like are you going to get immersed in you know like the the set pieces like uh um, right, so like if you were uh, in Jedi and all of a sudden you you would select that table that maybe the walls and everything kind of become foresty, you know, or the green yeah, or the yeah. lighting changes to green. Um, you know, maybe there's a grass patch now, you know, by your yeah, that'd like be that. cool. Or or if you're playing Empire, that everything goes to ice. Um, that would be like that'd that be real what immersion is what. <laughs> yeah, because that real immersion is it's kind of what you want in VR. You want that that break from reality. It's almost like with this thing. It seems like your your like lair or whatever it is, your your den, your, your Star Wars your dungeon, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, with all the cool stuff in it, is the environment. Well, what did and, what did what did Ecos call it, or was it Ecos that said it? It was the uh, the basement, the basement, um, because the you had job under the the staircase there. Yeah, yeah. Also, very confusing. Too many Acoses at Zen. We got to fix that, guys. <laughs> nice. Yeah, stop it. <laughs> Of course, it must be like John in England in English. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's a, Anyhow, that's it is Anyhow. interesting though. So, I mean, because I've also heard this brought up recently, how people are like, "Oh, it's only going to have eight tables to start with." I so much prefer Zachariah just having everything available in VR. And like we said, it's one thing to do VR where you just flick a switch and it's VR. You got VR, but it's not. It's not pleasing to be in for an extended period of time. 
mm. um, as opposed to this idea of a lobby to be able to look around to exit the game, be able to look around. That'd be cool if you're able to move around a little bit. Um, like if you've got room scale, uh, like it's turned on in your VR, and you've got a big space that your VR is tracking. I think the space is scaled. It looks like it's scaled well enough that you could probably walk around. You could at least walk around the table okay. if you are indeed walking around the, like if you're walking around this environment or locomoting through the environment. I reckon you could actually do that physical walk around the table and actually have a look into the details of the table from different angles if mm. you had the space. Now that is something you can't do on FX2 and that would be really cool. Yeah, FX2, I you think. can only lean to the side. You can lean into the sides. You can't do a full lap around the table. I haven't tried. Well, so, you know what? I don't know if you can or not. I have not tried it um, because I bump into a wall. Yeah, I've, <laughs> um, I've got. I've gotten. I, I, I've gotten all the way to the back of the table though and looked back forward. Oh, you have. Yes. So you've actually looked forward into the. Oh, there you go. So you can do it in FX2. But I've never. But I've never scale. gone behind the back glass. Okay. Right. Well, that's something to try. That'd be funny if there was, a, you know, the little the little CE electrical warning label on the back of the back, <laughs> the back box. <laughs> See the cord coming yeah. down. It would be really cool if they did that. It would be kind of cool if they had some sort of Easter egg right. behind there. You know, like 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 you say, like a like a CE label or something that yeah. like is funny. Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> I'd like to see that. All right, we're just, you know, just just to reward you for walking around the back of the table like some sort of stooge uh, <laughs> <all right. laughs> like you know we were talking before about what this vr platform is going to be the start of like they, you're saying they got this will be 21 tables now we see eight in there at the moment uh i th i mean they even hinted sort of in um tps2 that well you know if it's if it's popular enough we might see some more tables in the in the future coming to the the VR platform. It's like it's going to be popular. <laughs> People are going to buy this thing. I mean, yeah. if you if you want pinball on VR, you've got FX2 VR, and now this, and that is your only options. Well, I was going to say it also gives them a chance to okay, so they they drop eight Star Wars tables, mm -hmm. and then let's say next they go, hey, here's eight Williams tables. And then after that, they drop, you know, some Zen tables. But it gives the team a chance to, uh, yeah, gauge interest, but also not have to prepare everything Pump for up. a giant dump that it, they can be spread out over time. Because um, yeah. I think that's certainly for the, the, for the VR yeah, they people. they got development time. Yeah, for the VR people, you don't want to all of a sudden have, here's everything and it's going to cost you this much. No, that's a big ticket shock. That's a yeah. ticket shock. Hell, that. yeah. So you want to like you want to be able to stage it out so you you pay whatever this is going to be um, on release, um, and then um, you like you know maybe three months down the track, six months down the track when you sort of explored the games that they have on there and really had fun with them, you go, oh, there's there's I don't know three more, six more. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. You know. Um, you could even probably split it up the way they've split up the packs on Steam mm -hmm. and like group them, just like do a carbon copy of that DLC, but just release them in VR. And then, you know, they'd have time to do all the, all the extra character animations. And, and I, I guess in some ways it's probably maybe easier for them to not theme the environment like they did in, in FX2 VR, because it means all they need to do is plonk you in front of the pinball machine, have a few characters doing things around you, and then that's it. You don't have to worry about re-theming the entire room. And because I imagine that's that's probably non-trivial to do. No, um, you're probably right. So that would allow them to actually release more frequently these these um, DLC packs yeah. for, potentially by having that static sort of environment. Like this is the environment. Change the characters. You're done. Ship it. I, I know it's not as easy as that, <laughs> but it's easier if you don't have to worry about all the other environment stuff. Right. So, 